Hello, my good friends. Welcome back to the channel. Always with the Kotlin Flow API. In this video, we are going to take a look at the shared flow component from the Kotlin Flow API. Let's get started. So, in the previous video, we talked about mutable state flow, or we talked about state flow. We see that this state flow is kind of a way to store the result of flow, so we can emit it or to other collectors later on. So we'll see that explicitly in this video. So, first of all, let's took back look on here. So here, as we said, always check the documentation, like this is an important one. So we saw earlier that state flow is a shared flow. So we'll be talking here, but why this state flow is shared flow? Why it is important? So first of all, it is shared. So why it is shared? Because we want to share the data from the flow to different collectors, the same data. That's why state flow was here a shared flow. That's one thing. It's not only for that, but it's one of the reasons. And here, shared flow is also a hot flow, so it will be working and active whether someone is collecting from it or not. So here, you can create basically the same thing, you can rename only here, shared from state. That's one thing. Sorry, yeah, we'll just have to import those, import it, and import it here. So basically here, we don't have this one, and we'll have to rename this mutable state flow to mutable shared flow. Same thing for here to shared flow, right? So basically you can collect it as normally as you usually collect a flow. First of all, we don't have an initial value. So that's one thing. The other important thing is that this, as we said, since it is a hot flow, so it will emit values, but it won't store them. So if no one is collecting from that flow, it won't receive that value. Well, there is a workaround here. There is a parameter called reply. We will see it in a minute, but let's take a look here. So let me just delete that to the get data. Basically, maybe in the get data we will do it. So let's say here in the get data, this get data will emit value. We use the emit here, and we emit the value of b, for example, and it will emit it after one second. Well, let's comment this. I want to emit it, and then after one sec one second, I want to start collecting. So you can see we won't get any value, right? If we run this program right now, you will see. Nothing here, nothing here, and it will stop immediately after five seconds, exactly. So, but let's take it the way around. We will start observing or collecting from that flow, and then we will get the data. And here, as you can see, we won't get anything, and then we will get B, and then it will stop. So as you can see, the value of B will be emitted whether there is collectors or not. This is the most important thing. That's one thing. If you want to have this B stored, okay, because the beauty about it, not just about one value or two values. You can emit many values. For the state flow, it will only keep the latest value, and this is important. For the shared flow, it won't keep anything. If you want it to keep some values, you have to explicitly say it here, replay, like it will replay to new collectors the values. How many instances of the emitted value you want to replay? Basically, I want, for example, not five, of course, we will replay only two, for example, or only one, for the sake of example. So if you have this get data, here and you won't have this delay. Sorry, let me just have, I don't have this delay. And let's have the delay here. So basically, it will get the data, it will emit it. No one is observing, but after this collection started, this collector will start, he will get the latest one value. If you do it, you will have it like the following. We will have B as you can see. If we emitted two values, for example, let's emit two value after another A and B, and let's delay it with two seconds or just one second. And let me just delete that and run it. Here, we will get, ah, sorry, yeah, I did, I want to show only the B. As you can see, we are getting only the B, but if I wanted to replay the A and the B, as you can see, here we put the two, and we'll run it again. We'll get both A and B, as you can see, at the same time. Why we got it at the same time? Because basically we got an event for this B. We didn't get an event. This collector didn't get an event for this one. But since he did get an event for this one, this mutable shared flow will replay the two instances, two latest instances. So that's the crucial part about the replay. There is also another thing for this shared flow. You can have something called replay cache. Well, not this is list of the replay. It will contain A and B or all the emitted value. But there is another one called, let me just see it here, the mutable shared flow. There is exactly this one, subscription count. This subscription count, you can limit how many collectors can collect from this or can subscribe to this shared flow. 
right? So basically, well, these numbers come from like the requirements, business logic or something. Don't just put one here for the sake of one or anything. So basically, if you have a requirement like that, this API allow you to do that. Like this is really important. And this is a shared flow, as we said, this is a shared flow. So if you have many collectors, they will get the same values. This is important. They will get the same values. In order to illustrate that, let me have another example here. And instead of doing a string, we would try to send a person. Let me create a class of person. I don't need this person. I'm using this person directly here so I can see its address, like the memory address. Okay, okay, like that. Basically here in the emission, I will emit a new person. So when you do this to string, when you print it, you will see person at some at sign and some random numbers. So here, as you can see, if we run this program, we will get, as you can see, we will get this. The first and the second will get the same instance of this person, right? As you can see, it's the same person. Like I'm talking about the instances. Same thing here for the second reply, because you are doing two replies. Here we are getting the second, same person, the first one and the second one. Why we didn't have first one, second one, that will depend on like the collectors, like we can't really control that. Okay, this is the flow of execution, but this is it. That's one thing. And as you said, this, it is shared because it will share the same data set to all the collectors. And why we are using this flow? Basically, first of all, it, it is storing our state, right? We can use the state and you can collect them whenever we want. So this will allow to decouple the emission from the collection better way, right? And let me have another example here. Let's have a function that, let's call it get flow to show the contradictory of this example and do a flow like that. It will be a person. And here in that flow, we will just delay it with two seconds and we will emit a new person. So basically it will be the same example. But here you will see something different. Let me just collect from this get flow, this get flow. As you may expect, this get flow will be totally two different, like we call it, flow, I'm not talking about flow at API, but the flow, the flow, yeah, I don't know whether you get it or not, but yeah, if you run this program right now, you will see different things. You will see first and second, yeah, exactly. Here we go, as you can see, the first one and the second one, they contain two different persons, and this is why I use this example of person, as opposed to shared flow. So each call to this get flow function, like it will create that flow and do that block but each collection from the shared flow should start to listen from that source and it should try to get the new value, whether it is shared flow or state flow. So yeah, that's it about this uh, shared flow thing. I hope you understand the main difference. It is shared, same thing as state flow. This allow us to collect from different collectors. It is shared, the data sent to this is shared. Also, it is a hot flow, so it will keep sending values whether there is subscribers or not, whether there is collectors or not. We have some features, like as we said here, there is the reply. By default, the reply is zero, so we don't have, we don't need an initial value. And it is, as we said, hot as opposed to normal flow. This flow is caught. This won't get executed unless there is someone who is watching, who is collecting for it. So that's the main differences between shared flow, like normal flow, and also state flow. I hope you understood the basic and the essential meaning of mutable shared flow, shared flow, and state flow. All right, so that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching this video in the end. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and see you in the next videos. Salam alaikum.